24-year-old Tom McGee, barely over the excitement of winning his second straight Canadian National Powerlifting Championship, begins intensive training sessions for the upcoming World Championship in Munich, West Germany. Six days a week, three hours a day. My approach to training is different than it uh, has been for most powerlifters, but it's becoming more common for the new breed of powerlifters. And that is, rather than just training the three lifts, we train our entire bodies. We do bodybuilding exercises for basically uh, every muscle group. And the theory behind it is, if you have more muscle tissue, even though the certain muscle group may not play directly in the lift, it will give support to the other muscles and allow you in the end to lift more. something they feel I'm not going to lift this I never think like that when I go to approach a bar I just know I'm going to lift it that's developed between training partners. Ralph Renzetti is typified by his intense emotion when he lifts. Not as outwardly emotional as Ralph, but every bit is tuned up. We're a pretty tight group. We're all friends, but when we're competing against each other, that's it. You know, the friendships basically uh, are left outside the arena. Steak, medium rare, please. Between the three of us, we have a real contrast in approaches to our lifting. 
psychologically. I grow I'm so emotional. I'm trying to calm it down. I need to uh, uh, build up the energy. I, I don't just have it. I have to really build it up. Yeah. It's great visually. Yeah. I think that uh, that's why whenever we compete, the audience seems to really get with you. They really, yeah. they really want you to do well. Which in turn builds this energy up too. That's true. It's great. Yeah. So. Is that why you have to eat so much to keep up that energy? <laughs> Man, are you gonna eat all that? What a hug. <laughs> hey, well, I never eat anything all day, especially. <laughs> I gotta eat like a pig keep that weight up though. Just, uh, my natural weight probably is about 215 if I eat normally. Did you get tired of having to eat so much? I hate it, you know. But uh, it's like anything. you got to sacrifice for all sports have a sacrifice. And this sport seems to be eating to keep your weight up, you know, to maintain that extra strength is all part of the game. Eh? So, I think it's a lot better than dieting. <laughs> you know, most definitely, yeah. How much do you weigh, John? I'm right around 280. I'd like to get up to 300, but I seem to be having a really hard time eating enough. And I guess it's just going to take a really uh, continuous effort. One of the drawbacks to the new uh, style of powerlifting, training your whole body uh, six days a week, is that you're burning off a tremendous amount of calories. I drink a lot of milk. That's my one key of keeping my weight up. I like to drink oh, a gallon of milk a day. It has taken more than a fridge full of milk, however, to make Tom into a 280-pound world-class powerlifter. I just remember going up to my dad and asking him, if I do push-ups, will I get stronger? And he was telling me, yeah, you do one push-up today and uh, two the next day and three the next day. And I can still remember just the incredible interest I had in that. And there's very few things I remember that far back. How I got into the powerlifting, I've been training with weights for 11 years, and the whole strength thing really appealed to me because strength is a really important part of athletics. I've come to the strength I've got now in basically a very short period of time, two years of powerlifting. I've learned to really discipline myself. When there's other things in my mind um, that I could have been sidetracked on, I've learned not to let it happen. I said that the greatest thing in life for me is a conquest and the passionate um, going after a goal. Well, of course, I've had to learn how to go ahead and do that, which takes a lot of discipline, and I think that will carry over to other things in life. sport. The difference between powerlifting and Olympic lifting is in the lifts. In Olympic lifting, they do the clean and jerk and the snatch. In powerlifting, the lifts are the squat, bench press, and deadlift. The squat tests and develops leg and lower back strength. Secure your grip on the bar. Moving under the bar, you set it on your rear deltoids. Stepping out with control, taking a solid stance, a deep breath, and descending with control, making sure to put yourself in the position of maximum strength. Pushing your hips backwards and keeping a flat or slightly arched back, then exploding upwards, driving the hips forward and the shoulders straight up. In order to qualify for powerlifting rules, you can draw an imaginary line between the top of the knee and the point where the thigh inserts into the hip. That point must break parallel with the floor. Then again, with control, moving into the rack, and the lift is complete. The bench press tests and develops upper body strength, as well as being one of the most popular exercises in North America. You lie on the bench, feet securely on the floor, taking a good arch in your back. A deep breath, you pull the bar off the stand and control the bar as it descends to your chest. A slight pause, 
then accelerate upwards and back towards the rack. As the bar comes down, you want to pull your elbows in slightly and then push your arms outward as you go up. Again, with control, tightening up as the bar comes down. A deep breath, and you want to be tight, 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 pause, and accelerate. Putting the bar back into the rack with control. The deadlift comes closest to testing overall body strength. Standing shoulder width apart with your shins about three inches from the bar, looking at the floor about 15 feet in front of you. Weights on the balls of your feet. You go down to the bar, bringing your shins to the bar, taking the standard deadlift reverse grip. You pull the bar straight up and clear the shoulders back. A deep breath on the lift and the back nice and flat. The bar goes straight up and close to the thighs. The lift is complete. acquisition and uh, I would say that that qualifies us as probably the strongest athletes in the world Tom is the only Canadian ever to break the four-minute mile of powerlifting his best squat bench press and deadlift combined Total 2,115 pounds. Come on, right back to the Come on, Tom. Go. Let's go, T. Come on, smoke them up. Easy, Tom. Easy, Tom. Down. Let's go, T. Come on, Tom. Try it up. Come on, ready up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Tom. Come on, Tom. This close to the world championships, Tom checks in with his physiotherapist. I'm just going to do a little steam on that vastus medialis. If you have an injury that's starting to come about and you can take care of it before it happens, you'll never have any downtime at all. So it's very important to listen to your body and to be smart enough to know when to back off, but tough enough to go ahead and do it. You have in pretty, uh, pretty good shape by the contest, figure? Yeah, we'll try and keep on top of them and make sure everything goes okay. 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 Great. All right, thanks. All right. Good. Good. It is down to Tom's final heavy workout before the World Championships. Come on, Tom. The way I get my adrenaline level up is while I'm wrapping my knees, I start to say things to myself to motivate myself. For example, you've trained hard for this one. You're representing Canada. If I win this contest, it'll do such and such for me. I've got to prove I can beat this person. I've got to prove I can lift this weight. It's the kind of, of thing where I try and develop it so I can get an adrenaline flow when I need it. By the time I approach that bar, my heart is just going doom, 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 about 180 beats per minute. So you're really ready to go. What you have to do is get into total business, total control, total concentration. I mean, when you're walking to that bar, somebody should be able to hit you with a two by four and you wouldn't notice. Three times. Come on, buddy. Come on. Let's do it. Hey, man, show your middle. Tommer, you need us in the world. Let's do it. This is 
said, big man. This is the one you trained for. <laughs> champion. There will be uh, a number of people there with the potential to become world champion. I think that strength-wise, uh, there will probably be four or five people in my weight class that will uh, be in the same ballpark. And it will just be who puts it together on that day, who's done the best preparation, um, who travels the best, and, and I guess right down to it, who's the toughest in the contest. So yes, I can win that contest but so can the others. It all depends on who puts it all together. Gentlemen, well, I'd like to thank you all for your tremendous support that you've given me for some preparation for this contest. against the top power lifters in the world. This is where Canada's Tom McGee hopes all his heavy training will pay off. Normally a heavyweight, Tom decides at the last minute to move up into the over 275 pound super heavyweight class, making it by just one pound. At 276, Tom is the lightest of the seven lifters in his class and must beat the 325 pound American champion Wayne Bouvier. It's a calculated risk. The rules are that each competitor attempt three lifts in each event. The total of his best squat, bench press, and deadlift determines his final score. Highest score wins. And now, we're ready to go. West Germany's Kuster opens with 270 kilos, or 595 pounds. The lift is good. The Spaniard, Soriano, chalks his hands for a better grip. He chooses to open with a light squat, only 250 kilos, or 551 pounds. The Dutchman de Froog, 310 kilos, 683 pounds. Australia's rate.